Hey residents of Meeple Town, today we are wrapping up our top 50 games at this moment. We are looking at number 10 through 1. It's like pretty exciting but kind of sad too, don't you think? No man, it's not sad. It's, it's all hype. It's all hype, yes. Getting on we the get hype to talk train. about our favorite games right now. So That's I'm pretty hyped. exciting. I'm excited. Okay, now I'm getting pumped. <laughs> Alright. Let's do it. Alright, you start it off. You, me, you, me, you, me. Okay, I will start off, I guess. And my number 10 is the, you know I like to do this, Dean, the 67th ranked overall game on Board Game Geek. It is a 7.8, and that is a fantastic game that you haven't played, but you really should, and that's Twa. I love Twa. The decisions that you're making over the course of the game, really, really fun. You can either do like civil actions, military actions, or work in the cathedral, but basically you're taking these die, and the crux of it is you're rolling them, and then you're choosing um, out of your die or one of your opponents, if you want to pay for their die, um, a certain color die, you're picking them to do certain actions. But again, the interesting thing is, is I can take my two yellow die or I could go, hmm, Dean's got a nice juicy red die. I'm going to pay two and I'm going to get that red and add it to my red and do that action. So there's just a lot of really cool thoughts as the game's progressing, but it's not overwhelming or anything. Really fun. Cool classic Euro, Twa is awesome. Yeah, this is on like pretty high on my want to play list and has been for a long time. I really think you would like it. <clears throat> yeah, me too, me too. It's actually yellow, two yellow dice, not two yellow die. Um, so. <laughs> All right, my number- it, Unless you're um, dying a shirt. Number 10 for me is Imperials. Okay, it's three-parter, Imperial Settlers, Imperial Settlers Empires of the North, and 51st State. You are not allowed to Can do I that. Can I do that? All right. Yeah. Then if I had to just say one, I would say Imperial Settlers Empires of the North. Whoa! The this new one, baby! The brand new one. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it's that good for me. And I really, really like the other ones. So all, all three of these are pretty much rated the same, but a slight edge to Empires of the North. But all of these are, em are engine building games, and you've got cards in your hand, and you're putting them out into your tableau that will give you extra actions. They'll, they'll produce, um, depending on which game, they'll... they'll uh, they'll produce, they'll they'll do different things as you play them out. And so you're just building up this engine. Imperial Settlers Empires of the North is a race game. And so it's the first one to, I believe it's 25 points. And then after that, you add up all the points and whoever has the most points based on the, the cards that you have in your tableau and the points that you've already gained throughout the game is the winner. And I really, really... I just love it. I think it's a ton of fun. And the Empires Super of the North fun. adds this worker placement aspect to it. It's actually like action selection um, aspect to the game, which really ramps up the game faster, which is why I like it a little bit more. Yeah, I can't decide quite yet which one I like better. Um, I think I might like Empires of the North better, but I won't give that call yet. It was number 14 on my list, so yeah. I really like that game. It's I love a good engine builder. Sim pretty simple, actually, to, to learn. And I do really like Empires of the North, though. That action selection part, quite nice. And I don't know if you mentioned, but having all the different factions oh, is a right. really cool yeah. part of Empire Settlers or... Imperial Settlers or Empires of the North. I just I just did a mashup right then. <laughs> Especially 51st State doesn't have that as much. It does have different factions, but they're subtle. Uh, the other ones, are, they're pretty different. Yeah, I like it a lot. Yeah. All right, so because of the podcast, we already recorded this thing. We I know. think that we have the same. We, I do forget some of this. Like I don't know. You, I can't remember your top list totally, but I do remember that we... This is the first time ever that we have lined up perfectly. Yes. And our number nine is exactly the same. And our number nine is Everdell. a ah! <laughs> Yes. It's the same one, right? I can, it's my, I can say it. It's ranked number 152 overall. <laughs> you, I didn't get to do you the build up. Again. You totally stole it. I don't, can we get off this video now? <laughs> <laughs> well, go ahead. You did stole I, did I hurt your feelings? Yes. Okay. Everdale is another <laughs> tableau builder. I'm just, I'm jumping in there, right? That's what I was just giving you. You it's, jumped in, so take it. It's engine builder, tableau builder. It's it's just, in some ways, really close to Imperial Settlers, which is why I have them mm -hmm. rated uh, so closely. But you have these cards that you're building in your tableau, and you're getting points based on spending resources, the different card things that trigger, and then you also get end game points for 
the the card values on there so is that good yeah it is, is that... good it's good it's a, it's adequate <laughs> i would like to say if i had one word to say i would say adequate <clears throat> uh, the theme is awesome in uh, yeah. everdale i love the worker placement action as well that's yeah. fun i love the feeling that wow i've got to get 15 cards out i only got two out in the first season or something small but by the end you're like oh i can't even fit all these cards into my tableau and do i have cards that can get rid of cards if not i'm just stuck with what i have um it's fun it's great. What what that came out like a year ago, and it's this high because it's that yeah. good. And I'm I'm sticking with it. We did the. It was on our first podcast, and it was just like this game is great. And I'm really happy to say it still is very great. Yeah, and anyone, I think both of us, anyone that we've introduced to it, that whether they're a gamer or not, oh, really like have it. really enjoyed it. Both of our our wives both enjoy it. I believe um, that always other, helps a lot. Yeah. Totally agree. There you go. That's my That's sour number nine. All right. So <laughs> then I guess my number eight then, right? <laughs> so my number eight is the 414th ranked overall. So this is pretty close. Um, I guess the board game community agrees with me almost. It's 7.7 .7 overall. And that is a Simone Luciani game. That is a game that came out last year as well. I really like. And that's Newton. Yep. Newton is super fun, and I believe that I like it because I ask myself sometimes, why do I really like a game? Sometimes I don't know. It's just a great gut feeling. But I think what I really like about this one is uh, just the mechanics of the game, the uh, the way that you're using the cards uh, as actions, the way that you're getting bonuses on your table based on how many of those of the symbols that you have. It creates the power to go out and do more traveling or to go out and do more on the science track. But I also really like the bookshelf in the middle where yeah. you're trying to line up. You're trying to line up these things and you're like, okay, should I go here so I can line this up so I can get this perpetual, this bonus at the end of every round? All that just really works together to be just a super fun game. Really enjoy Newton. Number eight. Yeah, not in my top 50. and we, we did a review of this on the podcast, but I did say this is a really, really good game. It's, it's my I think, my favorite Luciana game. Uh, if I, I'd have to go back and look, but I'm pretty sure that's right. I, I love Newton as well. Good stuff. Did not make my list, though. But what did so make my list... you didn't really love it. At, you thought it was decent. I quite enjoyed it. Is that okay? <laughs> that's, I guess so. That's acceptable. All right. What I really love is my number eight, and that is Puerto Rico, which Puerto I, th Rico. I think was on your top 50. Is that right? Abs tut Abs tutors it was. All right. I'll figure out where it was here in a little bit, but go ahead. <laughs> so, Puerto Rico, you are... 27! Yeah. <laughs> How do you like it when someone just jumps in on you? Uh, you should do it when I'm about to say the name of my game, I think. Oh, yeah. Uh, Puerto Rico, action selection game, and the, the thing that I really like about it is, well, one, this was one of my first intro games into the hobby, and I've played it a lot. I've really um, made all the components in mine really cool with wooden pieces and all that good stuff. But, uh, but Puerto Rico, the thing I enjoy about it is that when you select your action... If you are the one who who takes that action, you get a special bonus. Yeah. And so the interesting decisions about do I want this bonus or do I want to leave this next person open to be able to take a better action that's not going to benefit me as much. And so the those decisions can be um, can be tight. Now, if you've played this game a lot, you you tend to know what not to do. You know, even if you don't know like exactly what action I, I need to take, you know, I don't need to take this one to benefit the other player. So I enjoy it. Yep, I do too. It was number, as I mentioned, 27 for me. It's probably the game that one of the first games that I really that grabbed me and pulled me into the hobby that I like the best. I think it's probably the one I like the best out of like the first 10 maybe that I've played. Oh, okay. Yep. <laughs> uh, close to me too. I think there's another one I might like a little better that was in, in one of those first games as well. Excellent. All right, so my number, number, number seven is a great bag building game. It is ranked number 25 overall. So this one really is. I was you're gonna, gonna say, you're, it's, but the joke gets old. If you it does. Doing it, so you can't. It does. Do I've it. actually already made that joke in a previous video too. Nah, I know you have. <laughs> so that is Orleone. Did you already have Orleone on your list? Uh, I think so. Okay. Yeah, keep talking. I did. Uh, okay. I did for sure. <laughs> I, I just didn't know what number it was. Twenty six. So pretty high for you as well. But yeah. in Orleone, you're building this bag, which allows you to make these, um, to do these really cool actions. And what I like about it is you're not just pulling a token out of a bag and going, okay, I get to do this action. You're having to match up multiple tokens 
to be able to do the action. So whether you're going to go travel or whatever you may be doing, you've got to have a different, a certain combination of them, which I think is just really fun in yeah. the course of the game. And at least interesting decisions based on uh, which um, workers you're actually trying to get in your bag and all that kind of stuff. So I really like it. Um, it's just a really fun bag builder. I can play Orleone any day. My wife loves this game. Super fun. Yeah, I I, I enjoy the um, the expansions as well. I've played some of the some of the modules from the expansion that add variability, which I think is is pretty cool. Um, so I I love this game as well. You looking forward to stories? Uh, yeah, but I don't know anything about it. The, that's Orleone Stories, which is a I think a standalone thing. I don't really know anything about it either, but it says Orleone in front of it, so I'm like, mm, yep, I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> Probably has nothing to do with the game, just branding it. Nope. So. All right, so my number. Tw oh, I was gonna say my number, number twenty-five. Number seven. Your number seven. <laughs> I was, I was still back at Orleans. All right, my number seven is. Root. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I actually had a I, huge he really, build up I know he really one. wanted to say that one. I won't do it again. This one is uh, the worst one that you could have just spoiled for me. I know. That's why it was the best to spoil. All right. So my number seven is Root, which Ooh. I was dead wrong about this game. Not dead wrong, but when we did it on the podcast, I gave it an 8.5 saying that I, I could see it going higher if it had some more variability in the factions. Uh, but now, the more that I've played this game, I've realized that that even if I know how all the factions play out, there's still uh, it doesn't play out the same way every time. And so I really enjoy this game. I enjoy just the base game. I think it's totally fine. But throwing in the 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 Riverfolk expansion, and then I'm excited to get the the Underworld one that's coming out. <clears throat> it just adds a, a ton more variability, and I. I love it. But in in Root, you take on this faction, and the cool thing about this game is you are you're moving around the board trying to do these different things to gain victory points, uh, and it's a race to, to 30. And it, it, if you're the first one to, to get there, you win the game. But the, the neat thing is all the factions play so differently. Yeah. You might be... Uh, uh, programming your movements with the birds you might be you know with the cats you're you're trying to build up these uh the buildings on the board uh, you know there's there's lots of different ways like once you pick your faction and and go with it what you're doing is so different than everyone else that's playing at the table which i think is is really cool the vagabonds are are just like a, a totally it's almost like you're playing four totally different games if you're playing a four yeah player I, game. I you know we also talked about wondering about replayability i think it's through the roof with this game the more i play it because yeah. it's just so different if you start with the vagabond or you start with marquee the cat and you have stuff all over the board such a fun game it was number 15 for me i really do agree with dean i think it's just it's awesome mm -hmm. I, I wish that i had more people to play it with though my wife does not like root yeah and this is a better um three to four player game i yeah. believe i think so we need to play it more. Yep, we just gotta find more friends. <laughs> I gotta. Would you All be right, my John's friend? All right, John's number six. No, I'm just... my number six. Well, I purposely did not pull up my list so that you couldn't do that. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it anymore. My number six is a Jamie Stegmeyer game, and I'm sure that you know what that is. I what think so. would that be? Would you like to tell Meeple Town? Oh, you know what? I don't remember. It's either uh, Viticulture or Scythe. Right? Scythe. Scythe. Yep. So uh, yeah, Viticulture was pretty high on my list as well. But oh, you've already said that. Yeah, Scythe is such a fun cool theme and it's i mean it's this uh alternate timeline like 1920s is that right dean i think it is <laughs> alternate timeline where you've got mechs and what i like about scythe is that you it's not just a pure war game like there are games that like like blood rage and stuff which i really like as well but are just a complete bloodbath and those are really fun and you may find out how yeah anyways um are really really fun and but with side that's really cool is that it's not just that like you're building resources out and you're going for all these different achievements and there may be one or two epic battles that you're involved in over the course of the game so there's just a lot of different things that you can be doing to go up certain tracks and to get your achievements but then deciding when to engage in combat to me is a huge part of it um, cause you could definitely do it too early and it could really hose you Yeah. or do it too late and they have built up their army and you're pretty much messed up. Right. Right. But you could still get the, you know, still get your star out there from, uh, from, from winning those battles. But yeah, yeah. this is a, uh, it's a neat so game. Fun. It, it's a neat game and I wouldn't call it a war game. It's, it's, you know, it has that cold war aspect of it, but um, that you're just like, Oh, they're going to attack. Am I going right, to attack? Are they going to yeah. attack? Who's going to go that center tile first? Yeah. All that stuff is just so much tension in this game. Yeah. It's good. All right, my number six is I mentioned earlier that there might be a game higher on my list that that was 
an intro game into the hobby for me. One of my first like 10 games, I guess. And uh, this one, Castles of Burgundy, mm, that's uh, a good was just one. a little bit higher than, than Puerto Rico, but it's uh, it also was one of those first games that I played. Uh, Castles of Burgundy. It wasn't one of the first games I played, but I like it obviously better than Puerto Rico. So yeah. Yeah. excellent choice. Hey, thanks. I'm done. All right. Uh, and Castles of Burgundy, John's already talked about this, but you are rolling dice and you are using the, the pips on the dice to decide what action you're going to take. So you might take a uh, one of the tiles and put it into your board, or you might take one of those tiles that's on your board and put it into your kingdom. And as you're placing those tiles out on the board, it's going to give you different actions or give you special abilities. And uh, it's, it's just a, it's a lot of fun. It's a really simple game. Now, the, the iconography can be difficult with the buildings or just remembering what the buildings do or what the science tiles do. Um, but I, it's not a big hindrance. I've played this game a lot. And I will say that I think it's best at probably two players. Uh, three is fine. Four, unless everyone knows what they're doing, I think it can really... It can go slow. It can go so slow. Because when you're yeah. constantly looking up those buildings, which you're going to do. I don't care how many times you... I don't know. Maybe if you've played it a ton, ton, ton. I've played it quite a bit. And I still have to go back and look. At, what does that building do again? I think it does this, but let me verify. Yeah, I have a mind like a steel trap, so I don't usually have that problem. Untrue. <laughs> uh, I, I I don't think that's as big of a deal as what John uh, says it is, but I, I do have like individual... It's not a huge deal, but it knocks it a little bit for sure. me. Yeah. That's me, but maybe because my mind is a holy trap. I, a trap that doesn't... that A non-steel non trap. My number five... Speaking of Blood Rage, last time, by the way, Scythe is number nine overall. Blood Rage is number 30 overall, and it is number five on my list. So even though I like the part about in the Cold War part of Scythe, and there's other pieces to it, I also quite enjoy a giant bloodbath, <laughs> a complete tension filled. I mean, that's what I, I love that blood, that blood Rage has this not a big map. It, things are getting Ragnarok, so it's getting smaller as the game goes on, and you just you've got to engage in combat and go after people. It's just you can't not. Yep. And you're yeah. like, yeah, you're doing all the, the upgrades kind of and stuff like that. Like it's just really fun, and it's not that com complex. We've I've played this game with people that haven't played a ton of games, and they picked it up. Like yeah. not that it wasn't that complicated. I mean, they had to think about certain things, but it wasn't overly complicated. It's a blast. Yeah, it's because all the information's on the cards that you're drafting, so yes. it makes it really simple. And the, you know, it is. It's a very much in your face game, but the the neat part of it is like you're not you're not attacking a single person, but you're when you pillage, you're attacking. You know, there's this this giant battle that that plays out in that pillage, and so I think that makes it go up a notch for me because uh and, and people that might not like super in your face games might still like this because you're you're just going for this place instead of going after somebody although they do you do go after them in you, the process and feelings do get hurt in this game i don't know if you've experienced that or not depending not on who you're Viking, <laughs> not, depending on who you're playing with uh, my wife may or may not have not spoken to me for a day or so after we played one of these games. <laughs> I stand corrected. <laughs> yeah, but she still likes it, so... She just doesn't like John. That, that's that's accurate. <laughs> All right. Uh, Blood Rage, fun game. Yep. Yes. All right, my number five. I kind of struggled with this one. I, I have Pandemic Legacy as my number five, but I didn't, I didn't really lump in all the pandemic games kind of on purpose but i do think that had i not i probably would have had pandemic somewhere in my top 50 if i didn't have pandemic legacy as my number five i'll just say that uh but pandemic legacy there's not a whole lot i can talk about this game just because it is uh i don't want to have any spoilers come out but um it's it's basically the pandemic if you've played pandemic you're going around the world and trying to fight these viruses and and save the world pandemic legacy adds a story element you're putting stickers on the on the board on the cards and the game changes from round to round and the, some of the rules change as the game goes on which is just fantastic if you haven't played if you haven't played a, a legacy game, I really recommend starting here. Even if you don't like pandemic, pandemic, excuse me. If, even if you don't like pandemic, I think doing the legacy version of the game is different enough because of the story that it introduces that you might really, really enjoy this game. I do. I absolutely love it. Pandemic was 48 for me, which it's one of my favorite co-op games. I'm not a huge co-op fan. I would rather just bloodbath people and attack them, I guess, apparently. I opened the 
Pandemic Legacy box. I played the first uh, round or whatever you want to call it with my wife. She did not like it at all because she does not like co-op games. Um, and I sold it. Boo. So, because she wasn't going to play it again. So, I actually really thought the legacy aspect of it was cool. It actually might be ahead of Pandemic if I had actually played it more, but I yeah. haven't. And if you don't like co-ops, you don't like co-ops. So, I don't think that's going to change in this game. She doesn't like co-ops because she is afraid to give a suggestion that might not be the best. And so, she just kind of sits there and not, doesn't say a whole lot. Mm. So. I give... I give dumb answers all the time, so I love... I <laughs> Story love, of my life. Love co-ops. Story of my life. Okay. <laughs> so that is your number five, right? Number five. All right. My number four is 70th overall. My number four is a game that I desperately want to own. Um, but in the U.S., if you want to get an English version of this, it's going to cost you like $150 on Amazon. And that is a fantastic railroad game called Russian Railroads. Excellent. You have not played Russian Railroads. I have not. Now, it's language independent, right? You don't have to. It is. And so, actually, thank you. Uh, after we did the recording on the podcast, one of our listeners said, hey, why don't you go over to another site? And, yeah, I can get it in another language for, like, 40-something bucks. So oh, wow. So, I will probably do that, actually. So, mm -hmm. that was, like, thank you very much. I should have remembered his name so I could have given him a shout-out. But thank you if you're watching this. And you responded on the podcast. But in Russian Railroads, you are building these tracks. And it's just a simple worker placement. You're placing your worker in doing whatever action it is. The interesting thing is those certain color tracks have to go ahead of other color tracks and as you're moving your tracks forward you're also setting off bonuses, getting extra workers, doing different things like that. So it's it almost it doesn't have a gone Sean Clay. Like it's got that feeling when you unlock this and you get to this part and it unlocks this and now you can move your track forward even more. It's probably not that exciting to talk about, to be real, <laughs> but it is an absolute blast, a super fun game. I love Russian Railroads. Yeah, I really want to try this. I did want to try it until you compared it to Ganshan Clever, and then... It's not anything like Ganshan. <laughs> it just, the feel, it gives me the feels when you're unlocking certain yeah. things as you're going up certain tracks. I like that. I like when things trigger things yeah. to an extent, as long as it's not, is it is a lot of upkeep? Or as long as it's not a trigger in your face. Mm -hmm. It's not a lot of upkeep. <laughs> All right. Are you ready for me to move on? Sometimes Johnny Gangsta comes out. To number four, which is a game that you have not played. Speaking of gangsters. And uh, kind of, yeah. Really? Um, yeah, actually. <laughs> um, uh, this is a cooperative game that I enjoy playing a lot, especially at Halloween time, and that is Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition. Now, I'll say this. Never played. Um, I don't I don't know if you'd like this, because the, the mechanisms in this game aren't super strong. Um, what the decisions that you're making aren't always uh, the strongest decisions. It's you know, should I go attack this monster or not? Should I go and take care of this thing or should I do this? But it's not it's not super heavy. But the thing that I really enjoy about it is the experience, is the the story driven element of this game. Now this is an app driven game, and what the app does is is will tell you where to move the monsters on the board. And so if you're not a big app person in games, you you might not like this game, but the thing that I like about the app is that it can very much be in the background if you have one person that's just controlling what the app is doing and yeah. everyone else is focused on the board and the story that's going along. So I, I'm okay with it because of that. Um, and I'm typically that the app person, right? I'll just read what's on the app. But as long as everyone's focusing on the board and the story, uh, I think this is great. Now, this is uh, one that you really have to have the right group to play play this with because, again, um, it's not going to wow. You know, like Russian, Russian Railroads, it's not going to wow you with the, the, the elements of the gameplay. Right. What's going to wow you is is being immersed in the story, and I, I love it. That's I, cool. I enjoy it. We will play one day, I think. How long is the game? A long. It's a lengthy game, right? Yeah. So yeah. maybe not. Yeah, it's a, we've we've had some that have gone like probably four hours, I think, probably. Yeah. I don't mind that. It's just we don't get that much time to play games True. together. Yeah. Yep. All right, so my number three is ranked number three overall on Board Game Geek, so that's a perfect alignment right there. It is a game that is out of this world. I worked on that the whole uh, way over here to record this. It's Terraforming Mars, and that is a fantastic game. The funny thing is you've game. made that joke before. <laughs> Have I? Oh, boy. <laughs> but you reworked it in your mind. You, you were tweaking it and making it a better joke. Uh, sometimes you mind just makes you think you're better and smarter than you really are. 
Terraforming Mars. Terraforming Mars is so much fun. You have this... <laughs> I'm thinking like in the board in the middle, it's definitely not blood rage, but it like there's like some really combative things and pieces that you're going for. What's so fun about this is it's totally card driven. They have a ton of cards. And I don't even know how many cards there are. They're all different. And so you're playing these cards and do different things, trying to get the right kind of combination of cards to get a strategy and go for it. But then you also are terraforming Mars in the middle of the planet, and people are vying for positions there. You're vying for where do you want to put your city, where are you going to put the parks, where are you going to do these different things. You're also kind of run, you're trying to run to the um, milestones ahead of other people. It's very interactive. Whenever other people are playing and making their decisions, I'm watching, I'm seeing what they're doing. I really like that. But then on the flip side, you've, you've got your own thing that you're working on too. It's just such a fun game. Everyone talks about this. So many people talk about this game. Not everyone. There's a reason why. It's a great game. I see this game talked about more than pretty much any other game, it seems like. I, I know people that just absolutely love this game and have played it hundreds of times. You know, which yeah. this is not a short game. It says two hours on, on the page. And that's, um, I, it can go longer than two hours for sure, especially if you have a lot of players. Yeah. And even with such a lengthy game time, I know tons of people that love this game. So, uh, it yeah. It feels so different every time you play because the card, the card based yeah. actions are just, there's so many cards, like so many different paths that you can go. And then also with different expansions and depending on what corporation you get. And I'm not going to go on all that, but it's, it just feels different. Yep. And I like it. All right, my number three is a game that John's talked about today. This is a Stonemeyer game I called forgot. Oh, Scythe. there it is. Uh, I, John's already talked about how it plays, so I'm not really going to go into that. But uh, but I, I really, really love Scythe. And I love it because it's, I think because it has that, that tension, that really high tension that I might be attacked. And so I don't really want to stockpile all this stuff up in here. And it's, I really, really love this game. It was love at first sight with this game. And you, the love art is play. your favorite, huh? Yeah, this so is I'm probably my favorite art in maybe any game. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, such a good game. We've already talked about it. I've yeah. already talked about it. Scythe. Totally understand why it's three. It's amazing. All right, so my number two is an Alexander Pfister game that's ranked number 10 overall. This just keeps the climbing. Hmm. And uh, it was out in 2016. I thought it was actually a little bit sooner than that. That's what I was looking at that. But 2016, and that is the Great Western Trail. Great, and you've never played Great Western Trail. I have Trail. not. No. Oh man, you would love this game. I yeah, think. I, I bet I would. Who knew having a deck of cows would be so much fun? It's a. You're not selling me. It's, dang it. I'm, I'm trying to. You gotta sell me. I'm okay. It's well, a you deck have a, builder with cows. You have a deck with cows. Okay. Sold? <laughs> no, not at all. All right, so. I'm gonna run out and buy this game right now. Boom. So, uh, Great Western Trail, not only do you have a, a deck of cows, but you are taking building tiles and you're putting them throughout this trail. And the cool thing is, is you're sending your fella throughout the trail and you're doing actions based on what buildings are out there. But also, some of your buildings could cause Dean to have to pay me money to, to go through a building and uh, different things like that. And so, you're, try you're building this kind of engine, actually, of buildings that are giving you actions. And then you're going to get to the top. You're going to discard some of your cows or whatever. You're going to look at how many of the cows value in your hand excuse me and you're going to move on a train which i don't know man the more i play train games i just really like trains you're going to ship the cattle um and it is just comes together great because then after you do that you're going to go right back to the bottom and you're going to continue to do it so kind of whatever engine with buildings you've been building you're what you've been building you're going to continue to use over the course of the game so much fun Amazing game. Yeah, and I've seen people play this game, and I've watched several videos on this. The funny thing is that I've noticed is that it's a so it says uh, uh, two and a half hours roughly. Yeah. Um, which I I think for more players, I've seen games go longer than that for sure. I played probably three and a half hour to four hour game. Now that was with a several at least two new people in the game. Right, but turns seem to be really fast. So it seems like you're moving quickly. It's not like you're thinking for maybe and I haven't played, but there are times like when you have to think, but I mean yeah. a little bit longer, but if you know what you're doing, like if people have played it before, turns are actually really quick. Yeah. Which is super fun. I definitely want to try this. It's, it's amazing. Another one of those. You've got 3 I think that are in your top 10 that I really really want to play. All right, so my number two is a game that I think you would absolutely love if you played it. Because one, you love deck building. I do love deck building. You also love baseball. 
Way more I than do I do. You love baseball. Uh, my number two game is Baseball Highlights 2045. Mm. I really, really enjoy this game. So you have this deck of cards, and as you're as you play your games, you're going to get money to be able to put new cards in there. So you draft these new players, and then you send old players down to the minor leagues. And the cool thing about the and you're you're playing cards. I'll play a card. You play a card. My defensive uh, piece on my card might counteract your your offensive card if if you know they align well. And um, so the cool thing about this game is not necessarily the head-to-head. -head. I think head-to-head -head is a ton of fun, but when you can get a group of people to play this game and play a tournament mode, this game goes to 11. 11. It does, man. I, I really, style. really love this game. Now, if it's just if I'm just playing two-player, I it wouldn't be at, it wouldn't be this high if it was just two-player. But if you're playing in that tournament, it's just so fun because. Then what we what I do is you might play you know best out of three with somebody and they go round robin and then out of those you you pick ones to go on to the next. Do you level keep the and, same cards? Um, or yes. Do you, whenever yeah, you, do. you do tournaments. Yeah. Now you can do it lots of different ways and we tend to customize it. But once you get to the World Series, whoever's in that, they um, typically I think the way that we play it is this is your team and so you're not drafting new players in the World Series. Uh, but it's you. It's just fun. It's just a lot of. It fun. It sounds great. I love baseball and I do love deck building and yep. that sounds great the real question is though is who is on first this is why i insert cricket uh sound effects in the background it's the real question all that's right what, that's what meeple town wants to know maybe meeple town wants to know number one N number one is my <laughs> favorite game <laughs> Imagine that. Spoiler alert. Wow, okay. Number one is my favorite. It is number 18 overall. It is a game that the first time I played it, Dean taught it to me. Thank you, Dean. You taught me my favorite game of all time right now. You are welcome. Uh, the first time I played it, I remember going, I really like it, but it wasn't like top 10 or anything like that. But then I played it again, and I was like, oh, this is really fun. Then I rated it on our podcast 9 out of 10. And then I played it again, and I was like, Darn it. This is just <laughs> continues to go up. And then after about 10 to 15 plays, I was like, nope, this is it. This is it. This is my favorite game. And that is Concordia. Mm -hmm. I love Concordia. It was already on your list, right? Yep, it was. Better be. Better mm -hmm. be. In Concordia, you Way have... Way down on my oh list. Oh, my gosh. Let's get 21. Okay, that's, that's pretty good. good. You have card-based actions, which I really, really like. But one of the really cool things about that is not only are you doing card-based actions, but your victory points at the end of the game are, are about what cards you have. And you're buying cards to build your deck, but you may want to buy it for the action, you may want to buy it for the victory point. And so you have the victory points, so you have that going on while you have this cool like thing out on, depends on what country or what side of the board, because there's plenty of boards that you have, but you're sending your, your person out and you are building cities based on resources. There's a really, re really, really cool resource management part to this game. Just a lot of things that fit together like a wonderful symphony, and it plays beautifully and anyone wants to play this game with me i'll play them anytime because i love it that much yep insert I tier here i think I, that's what you should do really enjoy this game i want to play with venus the um uh, the team wow play it's so Oscar. fun yeah. dude i'm i i got it for i mean like i immediately was like i got to get this for the team play and i haven't played it much with team play but really enjoyed it yeah yeah i want to check that out i think i would love it there's not a lot of team play like that. I mean, I mean no. there are team play, but like like yeah, two v right. two games uh -huh. or something. There's just not a ton of them out there, especially like a Euro. Yeah, That's... and such a good game. Mm -hmm. When they added that to it, it just it cranked it up, baby. Yep, two uh two and eleven. Yeah. All right, we can't tell the same. My joke twice, number remember? one is my favorite game. <laughs> You just, you just, oh. You can't triple stamp a double stamp. Ugh. All right, my number one is a game that was already mentioned today, several times actually, and that is Blood Rage oh. by, I think, my favorite designer, Eric Lang, because I've got a lot of Eric Lang games. You have a love fest. In my top 50, with... especially like my top 20, for sure. I've got, I think, four or five Eric Lang games. All right, so Blood Rage, John's already talked about, but boy, oh boy, do I absolutely yeah, just love this game with the right crowd. Like John said, you might have somebody who might get their feelings hurt. They might not enjoy this game, but if you want to get a group of people together that just want to... Um, Go at it, baby. I was going to say shed blood on the table, <laughs> but not like really <laughs> uh, in the game. Uh, it's just fun, and I, I, I love that... 
when you when you get your cards in your hand, that feeling like you know if you collected baseball cards or you, you used to collect CCGs, like you open up this new pack to see what you have. That's kind of the feeling that you get to see what okay, am get? what am I going to work with? And then you get the next hand that comes around to you. All right, what's going to be good in this hand that might feed off of this card? And what kind of combos can I build up? It's just so cool, and the fact that you do that. Those, those drafting parts three times. That's my favorite part of this game is the drafting because I don't win this game very often. So You're I, better at it than I, I am. I lose a lot of battles. but I guess might not be saying much. <laughs> but, but I love it. I love Blood Rage. Yeah, one of the things I like about it I didn't mention um, that is just the f overall feel that you get when you're playing the game. Yeah. Like you are engrossed in it yes. because when Dean's moving and marching, you're thinking like it, whatever other, every other player does, uh, probably affects you some way or mm -hmm. potentially could affect you. So yeah. I can't really just walk away from the table because Dean may decide to pillage something that I want to come in on and attack him. And it's just like, that. it's just fun, man. I, like For like an hour and a half or two hours, I'm just like, ugh, sucked yep. into this game. Yep. And it's great. Yep, totally agree with that. That is Blood Rage. And I also had Rising Sun not too far down outside of my top 10. And with Ankh coming out later this year, the Egyptian-themed uh, game in this trilogy, I'm super pumped about that one. There you go. All right, that is it for our top 10. Now, we want you to get in touch oh, with us and yes. plug in with us. Yeah, like, again, it's like a celebration and a sadness to me. Like, I've really enjoyed doing this. So... Yeah. If you have enjoyed our videos, please hit the subscribe button. It really, really helps us out. We'd really appreciate that. Subscribe to our channel. Also, we have um, an Instagram, Facebook, and um, Twitter. There it is. Uh, Twitter accounts. Those are all at Meepletown Games. If you want to get a little bit deeper, I guess, maybe with us and really join in the community, go to Board Game Geek and join Board Game Geek Guild 3407. Also, I think we mentioned several times on here, we have a podcast, mm -hmm. Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher. Just look up Meepletown and you can join the buffoonery that we have on yes. our... <laughs> on our podcast that might be accurate and we'd love to hear your top 10 so if you want to comment below let us know what your favorite games are or or let us know in the guild we'd love to hear uh, what your thoughts if you agree disagree with us or if you're just like totally different list i want to hear what you got so anyway that's going to do it for the end of our that's top it. 50 thanks for coming down to people town